Okay, for Top Secret, we're going to play a video and then we're going to talk about some stuff. So here's the first video and then we're going to talk about some vibe coding. Hi, Jeff here, just working on the Fruit Jam and I'm working on getting an emulator called MCUME working. This is the Commodore 64 emulator. And I don't have the keyboard hooked up yet, but I do have a button that will type in a short basic program. This is the famous GoTo 10 program that uses the graphical set of graphical character set of the Commodore 64 to print an infinite maze. Um, it turns out that the character codes 205 and 206 are the two alternating diagonal characters. And this just prints them forever in a loop. So that's what's going on with the fruit jam and emulation. Okay. Um, that's the wrong one. So in, um, in uh, the news, you've heard about vibe coding, about okay. how people are making apps and stuff using these AI tools. We have a little bit of a video that we thought we could explain how uh, Lady Ada is using it. So here's a, a little bit, it's three minutes, a little bit longer than our, our usual short videos. But I think you'll get an idea of how a, vibes. How a person who uh, writes software and develops hardware professionally is using some of these tools. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, we're just like oh, vibing here. We're vibing, five, we're chilling. And listen to the Adafruit SoundCloud. Check yeah. it out for some uh, cool <laughs> sounds to vibe code to. Mm -hmm. um, I'm writing a driver for the Ublox SAM M8Q. It's a really great uh, GPS receiver. It's got a built-in antenna, easy to use. And it's got both UART and I2C. And one thing that's interesting about it is not only does it give you your standard NMEA data, which you can actually see piping out of here, I'm just making sure it's still alive, but also has this thing called um, UBX, which is like a com compressed format of receiving and sending data um, that first off can get you much faster update rates, like 10 Hertz easily over you know, UR, I squared C or SPI. Also can do much more advanced configuration and um, like grabbing data from the GPS, like much more than just what the standard NMEA um, stuff can do. And it's like, like many protocols, it's just a total pain in the ass to code for. I mean, there's just like hundreds of um, commands and like dozens and dozens of bit fields for each one. This is exactly the kind of stuff that I would hate to write by hand. Um, it would just take like years. Instead, where vibe coding it with Claude 3.7 Sonnet, which I'm loving. Um, it's just within an hour. I already got it doing the DDC, which is I squared C interface, um, setting up a stream interface for it, and then checking the I squared C, reading NMEA data, and also be able to send and receive UBX data. So the first UBX command I'm sending is just to set it into UBX mode, right? Because like you send that first packet to tell it, hey, I want to get this compressed data back. And it did a really good job. Um, I'm liking Cloud 3.7. It's like I've used Cloud 3.5 for a while. Um, 3.7 is looking really good. One thing I really like is I was like, well, I want to deal with these messages and I want a timeout and I want it to return, you know, a type def and um, for the different things, like whether it failed to send the message, whether it got a knack back, whether it got an act back, and also adding like verbose debug output um, so let's see over here, I've got my, I have like a Metro mini. I, I have to quickly update this chip because this chip is running out of RAM immediately because there's so much going on. And, um, it didn't get that enemy data because it's already in UBX mode, but you can see it received and transmitted a proper UBX packet to set the mode and um, even got the reply and, and like kind of printed out the success. And this is all vibe coding. All I had to do is it made a couple mistakes. It like accidentally set the I squared C address to zero. It didn't understand something about the stream hardware interface, but for the most part, like it's only took about an hour to get going. So soon I'll be able to get like all the data from uh, this U-block sensor. And then I can also expand it to cover other sensors like the M10, maybe some RTK modules, we'll see. I'm just vibing here. <laughs> yeah, Loving cool. it. Ooh. Thanks, Claude. All right. And then for this one, um, Anne, uh, let us see this in our internal chat system here at Adafruit as Anne was working on it. And it's a MS DOS on Fruit Jam. And then it loads uh, a game, which is 
pretty incredible. So yeah, it's it, it works. She's gonna work on getting the USB going, the yeah. USB uh, keyboard because it's like not quite working. Um, but it's cool is to, on the file system she's put an auto exec bat to play a video game. Yeah, it's cool. Um, and it plays Rogue. And I was actually looking. You can apparently play uh, Prince of Persia on the eighty eighty six. Um, the eighty eighty eight is what you need for King's Quest. Yeah, I believe. Okay. And then you have some uh, new stuff here. Okay. What's this? So I did the PCM 5102 and the 5100 I2S um, DAX. And then I was like, well, what if we want something slightly nicer than that? This is the PCM 5122, which is like the update. It was nice about this one. It has hardware and I2T and SPI controls. So by default, it just you can pipe I2S into it. It'll just work. And you can set the gain with pins. But if you want more advanced control, you can connect to the I squared C or SPI port, which I think kind of makes it like the best of all worlds. Okay, what are these? This is a triple output bonnet. So we're working on adding more uh, support to the Raspberry Pi 5 PIO um, protomatter library to support three strands of RGB matrices. So you should be able to get three times the bandwidth, especially for big display setups. Okay, and that is uh, top secret. Beep, 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 beep. Okay.